Okay, so this afternoon, topic abundance, specifically what I would like to speak about, abundance of ideas, creativity, and innovation. Uh, let me just tell you about my world, the world that I live in, the world that I work in every day. It was just mentioned in the introduction, so I live in this world of turning ideas of clients and innovators and inventors out there, turning those ideas into design. It's one thing to walk around with an idea, it's yet something else to get that down on paper, first major hurdle. Second major hurdle, turning that design, which is now on paper or in a CAD model in the, in the digital space, turning that into something physical, a prototype, something that you can demonstrate, you know, something that is what we call a proof of concept or something that, that I can show you and demonstrate to you that a potentially investor or a potential customer might look at and say, yes, I like this, I'll go for it. And then the, the very last step, quite important, is this notion of going from prototype and then being able to replicate it. It's one thing building one unit. It's yet something else building the second and the third and the fourth. So this is the world that I live in. A um, lot of negativity. Uh, I heard the lady speaking this morning about homecoming revolution. I'm a homecomer myself, lived abroad. That was not in my bio. 14 years, I'm back for four. Very excited, happy to be back. Uh, I recognized everything that was mentioned, absolutely true. So let's look at South Africa. I want you to remember this number, 30, 30. We are the 30th largest GDP or economy in the world based on GDP, which is amazing considering we are in the G20 countries. Not quite sure how we got that right, but anyhow, we are in the G20 countries, although our economy is number 30. So keep the number 30 into account. So now I want to share some good news with you. Our road network, 10th in the world. Our airports, 11th in the world. I must tell you, because I'm a homecomer and because I was abroad, I've traveled immensely through most parts of the world. I've been to many airports. I must be honest, the most beautiful airport for me is the King Shaka Airport in Durban. I've not seen, I think, perhaps München, Munich in Germany comes close, but that's about it. Renewable energy, we've moved up significantly. We are on 11th in the world in terms of what it's called country attractiveness index as measured by Ernest & Young. They look at foreign investors, FDI, foreign direct investment into countries, sovereign countries. We are the 11th most attractive country. We are ahead of countries like Australia, India, these kind of places. So quite attractive. Railway is quite impressive. Transnet's figures just came out this week. Impressive figures, I must say. Parastatal, they show they can do what they should do. Energy in total, I know our parastatal has been flogged and flogged and flogged, but we should not forget, we are still 19th in the world. Quite impressive statistic. Mobile telecoms, you know the big players in this country. Uh, started in South Africa and then expanded their footprint into the rest of Africa. But specifically in the world, 19th as a country. So again, remembering this number 30. So basically saying that we are punching above our weight. Okay, for those of you who haven't been there, well, please go. I generally say to people, once you've been there, you will come back again and again, and I'm speaking about people living overseas. Expats for sure, but definitely visitors and tourists. World Economic Forum, you've seen this, the number, or World Economic Forum, we've, you've heard the bad news this morning. Very low, very low on education, especially primary education. But I would like to show you where we are operating in the technology space and why this is so important for us. Number one in the world, number one in terms of auditing and reporting standards. Our company just went through audit now. I can tell you it's strenuous and it's good. I mean, there's a reason why we are number one. Another number one, protection of minority shareholders' interest. Okay, I understand, you know, when talk politics, then this number might seem skewed. But in terms of actual equity and shareholders, we are number one. And I'm talking, we are comparing ourselves to places, companies in London, in the UK, New York, Tokyo. We are number one. Financing through local equity market. This might sound surprising for startup entrepreneurs. Yet, if you look at going concerns, this is a number we can be proud of. Okay, I just want to go one back on that point. So, I know many of you, especially those in the finance world, we have this big risk tomorrow, Moody's is releasing what our status will be. Whatever happens tomorrow, let me tell you what it is today. Today, our country's credit rating, our sovereign credit rating, compares to countries like Portugal and Spain. These are large economies. In the European space, they, like Spain is like in the top five of Europe, 
which is massive economies. We're competing with countries like Spain and Portugal, just to put that in perspective. Okay, I would like to share with you some, some of you who came in early saw this picture already. This is probably one of South Africa's most famous, I would guess, or most recognized inventions. I'm taking a blast from the past. These are old innovations, you know, still existing. I mean, if you go to most harbors in the world, you will come across these things called the dolos or dolosa in the plural. Um, this is what's protecting the breakwater in harbors. This is to keep the water out, basically. This thing is perhaps less known. It is considered as one of South Africa's top 10 inventions, again from the past. But moving through, fast forwarding into the future, just putting this in perspective, most unassisted vehicles today are using technology that comes from this so many years ago. CAT scan. I'm fortunate enough to say I've never had to experience this, and I'm hoping none of you have, but if you have ever come across this machine called the CAT scan, South African invention. This you must recognize. This must have been probably one of the most used, what I would call an analog robot, right? So it's robotic, it does its thing, for people who have not seen or experienced this yet, it goes around your swimming pool and basically cleans it up. So that was one of the first commercially available robots decades ago. That's the past. I had a presenter speaking this morning about some interesting innovations coming from Africa. I'm, I heard the mention of MPISA, amazing technology. Uh, and I mean, the rest of the world is adopting that now. But I am focusing on South Africa today. So here's something more recent. You might ask, well, it just looks like another machine, another CAT scan. Well, in fact, not a CAT scan, X-ray. And you might say, okay, well, what's special about X-ray? It's been around for decades. This machine is quite unique in the sense that it's fast. If you're in, a, in an emergency room, an ER situation, you want this thing to be fast. Instead of waiting hours, there are some numbers, 13 seconds, this thing will scan 13 seconds. This is also one of the very few scanners that can do a full body scan. So. Leading emergency rooms in the world uses the te this technology. The factory is not very far from here, probably about 20 minutes drive from here. Here in Joburg is where this thing is being manufactured. And now the one current slash recent that's just been launched, that's been in development for many years. This is a breakthrough new kind of airplane, specifically light aircraft. Reconnaissance can be used in many applications. What makes this particular airplane quite unique is the fact of its, its cruising speed. It can go quite fast. I wouldn't say fighter just fast, but it can go quite fast if you need to. While it has fuel economy, so long endurance, you can do long flights, far nautical miles that you can fly with this thing. So you choose between fuel economy or, or speed. But the point is, it is, it's unique. The Boeing has this thing called Skunk Works. Many American large companies have things called Skunk Works, which just means they're thinking out there. It's like the Google X kind of thing. When Boeing Skunk Works come out to South Africa to come and visit, to come and view this working concept, their jaws dropped. They could not believe what had been achieved. And this is a product we are taking, we as South Africa collectively taking into market. Something very special about this is this notion of pods, and why I'm mentioning this is the aircraft manufacturer is not actually going to be measuring, uh, manufacturing the pods. This will be manufactured by the last aerospace countries, the Boeings and the Airbuses of this world, will be manufacturing pods for this aircraft because they see the future in this aircraft and what the potential lies. Now, the most special one, um, this is an entrepreneur, and, and I'm going to just stick with this entrepreneur for a moment. I believe he's a case study in his own. In fact, he should be standing here and telling you his story. And I'm hoping he will at some point. Um, amazing person. He took this thing from idea, came through idea. He, it was a dream, actually, when he was a kid. When he became an adult, he had the opportunity. So he went through all the hurdles in his life that he had to cross, went through the hurdles, finally got his, his dream into an idea, design. When he approached us, it was prototype. When we had to go to manufacturing, this is where it got stuck. We could not reproduce his prototype, so we had to go back. But this is where he had the sense of approaching experts, professionals, to help him through these steps. Basically, his product will save a lot of, a lot of water in the world. One toilet system can waste up to 700 liters of water per day. 700 liters. Just listen to that number. The easy thing will stop that 700 liters per toilet. It's been tested, it's been put into uh, community centers, well tested, well proven, and I believe he's going to go global. I really believe this is one of our next major industrialists in the country. Just some pictures. So we took it all the way through to production in the one city, Joburg. And this is just an example of how he's now, he's now started assembling. So this is the assembly facility where it's kind of strange. It's an office environment that should be in a factory, but anyhow. 
he got it sponsored, so, you know, thanks for that. Um, this is the final product. So this is the product that's being installed as you speak. So some of them being assembled in the recent weeks, and they are going into the first toilets in South Africa. If, in this particular case, the municipality loves it, they will ramp it up. He's, he sells, I've, I did his business modeling, is going into hundreds of millions of rands. He's potential business, just on this one product that he's developed. So a phenomenal guy. Just the last slide on that. Um, so basically the different components. So he had the idea, had the dream, and he saw it all the way through. Now that's all good and nice to say, well, excellent. So we have innovators, we have people that are bringing some very exciting projects to the market, and we have the history, we have the legacy of some very exciting technologies and products. But where to from here? And I've heard some speakers speaking this morning about this notion of education. We heard the number this morning. We were at a very low number. Out of 138, I can't remember the number, but it was like 120 something. Really bad. I tend to stay on the positive, so I only remember the positive numbers. But it was shocking. Okay, so how do we get there in the future? Uh, sorry, just the last one on this robot. Um, so this is, again, a unique innovation out of South Africa. This is a, a robot crawler that goes into pipelines. Now, you might think they have crawlers like this in Europe and they have them in the US. This thing is quite unique in the sense that it's in a full virtual reality environment. We see a lot of innovations in South Africa, especially in the mining environment around simulation, simulators, where people are sitting in a room and simulating as if they're under the mine. This takes it a step further. This is going into pipelines, and it's as if you are crawling in the pipe following this thing. This particular team, very young, less than three years old, startup MBA guys, or some roboticists and some MBA guys got into this business. They have been selected on the NASA program now to work on the robot. They've, they're in the qualifying round now to work on the robot for NASA that will go to Mars, right? Programming this thing based on NASA's platform. So just phenomenal to think that guys could have managed this in just three years. This is an amazing number. Um, I, I, this is something that's very close to my heart. I heard someone saying when I do the slide, I get very almost emotional. Um, million people. This company has assessed one million youth, trying to position them somewhere in the job market. They have brought the million people into potentially 200,000 candidates. And this is over a period of about four years. I've traveled the world, I've not done a lot of research on this, but I have come across very few instances in the world where these kind of numbers are shown or have been achieved. So the future. This is a place far, far away. For those of you outside the borders of South Africa, I just mentioned what to me is the most beautiful airport in the world, King Shaka Airport in Durban. This is about an over two hours drive from King Shaka. So if you follow that map up, you know, that's Google Maps, then we get to the school. Madwaleni, um, really in the middle of nowhere. I mean, there's like a very nice nature park on the one side, a very nice nature park on the other side, but right slap bang in the middle of this nature park is this very rural area. Now, in this rural area, they've started building these computer labs. I'm not saying, I'm not suggesting that technology is the answer, the only answer, but I do believe technology is an enhancer. It's a, call it a bridge to get students exposed, or scholars exposed to what's out there and what kind of technologies are there. And this is really where I believe the future is going. So technology in this case being applied, we are highly, heavily involved in this particular computer lab sponsored by a European nonprofit organization managed by the Department of Science and Technology. And in this particular instance, the Department of Science and Technology insisted that the technology used should be local. So basically the whole off-grid solution, the solar panels, South African invention. So this is a fully off-grid South African solution, computer lab where kids can now basically get access to technology, get exposed to what's out there. I mean, there's a lot of course content out there and get exposed to the modern world out there. Thank you.